Hi guys, today we will learn to use the depth math effect in DaVinci Resolve 18 to do the bokeh effect or the depth of field effect. And that's a bird. We will work with two clips in this tutorial. The first one will be the one of me pointing at this photograph of a bird in the garden. And the second one will be these flowers in the garden. So let's head over to the color page. And then I'll click on these effects and we'll search for a depth map. I'll hold down the shift key and drag this depth map exactly onto the line so that it will automatically connect like this. So the green will connect to the green and the green here will connect to this green circle. And by default, the depth map preview will be enabled. So you'll see this black and white thing. So what is this black and white thing? Well, the black parts will be unaffected by the effect while the white parts will be affected by the effect. And those parts that are further away from the camera in the background will be darker. And since I'm at the foreground and I'm very close to the camera, I'm almost completely white. Since we want to add a blur effect, um, I have to invert this because we want the blur effect to be affecting the background, not my face and my body. I want myself to be sharp. Then I will select this checkbox beside adjust map levels. And if I increase the file limit, the white parts will become whiter and they will occupy more area. So let me reset that. So I want the blur effect to not affect my body at all. So I will um, decrease the near limit. So by decreasing the near limit, I'm making the black parts blacker. So the black parts are not affected by the effect. So let me just decrease it until I'm almost completely black or completely black like this. And I can mess with the gamma. So if I decrease the gamma, the entire thing will become darker. And if I increase the gamma, the entire thing becomes brighter. So I reset this. And then with that map selected, I will hold down the Alt key and press S. So this will automatically create a new node. Let me shift this. Now I will connect this blue square to this blue triangle. And I've seen some people online who did this. They used the blur, the lens blur. Okay, let me just deselect this preview. And yeah, they use the lens blur to create the blur effect. However, I don't really like the lens blur because the lens blur doesn't look real. It looks pretty artificial. And uh, mainly because there's a white line around me when I use the lens blur. The lens blur might work in other scenarios, but not in this. So I will deactivate the lens blur and I will go down to this blur icon here and increase the blur radius instead. So let me bring this up. Yep. As you can see, everything now got blurred except for the foreground, uh, my face. And let me just go to this frame. As you can see, um, I will just bypass the effect. So initially it was sharp, but after the blur effect was applied, the bird here got blurrer. And more importantly, those that are further in the background got blurred even more. So compared to the bird here, the background that are very far from the camera um, will get affected by the blur even more. So that's the purpose of a depth map. Anyway, I can bypass the effect by holding down Shift and D. So this is just a shortcut for this button over here. All right, now I go back to the depth map. And as you can see, there's a bit of a white halo around me. It is really subtle, but um, it is it can still be seen if I zoom in a lot. So under map finesse, I can click on this checkbox beside post processing. And this will automatically make things a lot better. So if I select the depth map preview again, I can adjust the expand and contract. If I bring this to the right, it will expand. So the map will expand. And if I shift this to the left, it will contract. And I can also add some blur to the map to reduce the harsh edges between the blur and the sharp parts. And I can also adjust the post filter. I don't really know what the post filter does, honestly, but I think um, it is similar to the blend of the mat. So if I increase it all the way to one, the effect will be super strong. 
So let me just reset this and the blur and the expand. So most of the time you just want to select the post processing because it instantly make things a lot better and you might want to introduce some blur and expand the mat or whatsoever you want. So that's for the map thinness. Now the last thing we have to do, um, we haven't touched on yet, is the isolation. So I click on this isolation. It's sorry, let me click on this preview first and enable isolation. So as you can see, this happens. So the target depth would be to change the, the depth of focus. So if I decrease this, it will change the focus to the mid range. And if I decrease it all the way to zero, the focus will be on the background. And the tolerance will be the field of view. So if I increase the tolerance, I'm increasing the field of view. And if I decrease it, I'm decreasing the field of view. And the softness is just a blur. So let me deselect isolation because we don't really want to use isolation in this case. We will work with the isolation on the next click, the one with the flowers. So let me deselect this depth map preview. And currently, it is really laggy if I play it back. It is very slow. So to fix this, we can go to the edit page. And we will select playback. And under render cache, make sure user is selected. Then we will right click on the clip. And we will select render cache color output. And immediately, a red bar will appear above the clip that will turn blue in a few seconds, and once it's completely blue, it will play back without any lag. So we'll wait. Alright, now it's completely blue, let me play it back. Hi guys, today we will learn to use the depth map effect in Dublin 3 Resolve 18 to do the bokeh effect or the depth of field effect. And that's a bird. In this clip, we will shift the focus from the background to the foreground, or we can do it the other way around, from the foreground to the background by using the isolation in the depth map. So let's go over to the color page. Then I will hold down my shift and drag this depth map onto the line so that it will be connected like this. Then with this node selected, I will hold down Alt and S to create a new node. Then I will connect this blue square to this blue triangle and I will deselect this depth map preview. And in the new node, I will introduce some blur radius. So as you can see, the blur is affecting the flowers in the foreground and the background is unaffected. So if I zoom in a lot, you can see that there's a very harsh edge between the blurred part and the sharp part. So we can fix this by going to the depth map and selecting the checkbox beside post-processing. So this will instantly fix things by a bit. And we can also introduce some blur. Alright, now I will check this. And I will check the isolation. So currently the isolation is at 1, so the focus is on the foreground. If I shift the target depth to the left, the focus will slowly shift towards the background. So if I shift it all the way to the back, to zero, the focus will be on the background. And if I increase the tolerance, I'm increasing the field of view. So if I increase it to like one, the field of view will be very large. So like a lot of things will be affected. And if I shift it all the way to zero, the field of view will be very small. So nothing is affected, almost nothing. So let me just reset the field of view and reset the target depth. So. Let's say we want the background to be sharp initially. So around the start of the clip, I'll set a keyframe on the target depth. Then around the end of the clip, I will drag the target depth all the way down to zero. Okay, anyway, I forgot to talk about this. So my quality is set at better. Better will produce a better result. It's pretty self-explanatory. But if you want it to be faster, you can select faster. Cool. So let me deselect this depth map preview. And you can see that at the end, the focus is shifting to the foreground, the flowers. Then somewhere in the middle, the, the middle parts are blurred. And at the start, the foreground is blurred. So let's head over to the edit page and 
we will render cache color output. So we will wait for it to render and we'll see the outcome. Now let's play it back. So that is how you create the shifting depth of field effect. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you next time.